Hey kids, we're back. This is lesson 27, continued part two. <laughs> uh, just so we could fit everything on the video without getting cut off. So hopefully it will work better this way. Anyway, we are on number two. We just finished the whole first side of lesson 27, problem set number one, A through I. Uh, see the previous video if you uh, need help with that one. And this is just going to be the word problems, the last four problems, numbers two through five. Anyhow, um, the introduction to all this is on the previous video. So if you are only seeing this for the first time, then please go watch the number one A through I video first, and you'll have a lot more information. Anyhow, let's get going. 30 and 48 hundredths kilograms of beef was placed into 24 packages of equal weight. What is the weight of one package of beef? And so as always, you want to think about what is being shared. If you were to make a tape diagram, it's the whole thing, the 30 and 48 hundredths kilograms that is being shared into 24 packages. Okay, one, two, three, dot, 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 up to 24. So how much weight in each is what we're trying to figure out. So take the whole and 48 hundredths and share it by what we do know, the 24. Decimal up. When you see the decimals inside, it must now be on the outside. Start dividing 30 by 24. I can only fit one in. One times 24 is 24. Subtract and get six. Compare. And we're safe. Six is a lot less than 24. So bring down the four. Now we have 64 tenths that we're dividing by 24. If I had roughly 25, two quarters would make 50. And that's as close as we can get. Two times four, though, actually is eight. Two times two is four. Do your subtraction. If you want to use the standard algorithm, take one and give 10. The difference between 14 and eight is six. Five minus four is one. You have 16 left over. And now we have uh, the quick compare. 16 is less than 24, and so we can bring down, if you need to use lines or graph paper to keep track of where your numbers are going, please be neat. Be neat. I can't believe some of the stuff I see, and it's like, whoa, how can you do it? Well, you do it, and there are errors, so please be careful. Now I have 168 divided by 24, and again, if I was using 25 or quarters, I would have four quarters make a dollar, and then 25, 50, 75, that would be three more. So I can try to have the seven here. Seven times four is 28. I like that. And then 14 plus two is 16. And that helps us end with a zero, which we love. So what is the weight of one package of beef? This is going to be our label, but it's a word problem. So write it out one package of beef weighs 1.27, which is 1 and 27 hundredths kilograms. There you go. There's your answer. Okay. Let's do another one. What is the length of a rectangle whose width is 17 inches and whose area is 582 and 25 hundredths inches squared? Noticing that they put this in the typical format that you would get for area. You have to square your inches. Remember that the formula for area is length times width. Now we plug in. Again, this is just like one of the warm-up problems. So if you didn't see the warm-ups, go back and watch the previous video so you can get familiar with what to do and why. We're going to plug in our 582.25. We're going to plug in, okay, what is the length? We don't know. But we do know the width is 17. Okay, and this is all inches. So we have the same unit of measure. We do know one, we do know the other, and we don't know this. So remember, fact families, fact families. Okay, it, I can switch the order, and I can also do divide this by this to get that. So we're going to do standard algorithm. 
582.25 divided by 17. Decimal up. Start in the hundreds place. This one is not divisible, but 58 is. If I had 20 and I did 20, 40, 60, that would be three of them. I have less than that, and I'm still pretty close to 60, so I'm going to keep the three. I'll try that. 3 times 7, 21. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. Subtract and get 7, and compare. 7 is less than 17, so move on. Bring down the 2. Now for 72 divided by 17, again, if I had 20, I could say 20, 40, 60, 80. I could try for 4 because I have less than 20 by 3. So if I'm repeating that, I should have enough room here. 4 times 7, 28. Carry the 2. We'll just use that one. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. Again, pretty close here. The difference between 68 and 72 is 4. Qu quick compare. Bring down the next one. 42 now, divisible by 17. How many times? Well, if I had 20, I might say two 20s. 2 times 7, 14. Carry the 1 this time. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. And the difference between 34 and 42 is actually 8. Bring down, all the way down. Big drop. Now I have 85 divided by 17. Again, if I had 20, 20, 40, 60, 80, four of them, four 20s would be 80, but I have less than 20 by three, so I can try five. Five times seven is 35. Use a three this time. Five times one is five, plus three is eight. Look at that, nothing left, hooray. So go back to the problem. See what they're asking for? What is the length of a rectangle? Then we have to label it properly. The length is 34 and 25 uh, hundredths inches. Don't forget to put the inches and circle or box your answer. Now I hope these are helpful. I always want to help you guys. Don't, don't, uh, you should really just keep the volume on and listen so that you can learn how to do this stuff. It's helpful. I um, want you guys to just ace those tests. Alrighty, a soccer coach. Click subscribe. Come back again uh, on future videos. I always have lots of videos. A soccer coach spent $162 on 24 pairs of socks for his players. Kind of like the previous tape diagram with the total at the top and it's in 24 sections. If you want to use a tape diagram, it can be helpful. Now the next part is how much did five pairs cost? So if you take your tape diagram, you have the $162, I can even just say $162, on 24 pairs, and this time I'm gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, and I'm gonna do the dot, dot, dot down here, up to the 24, okay? Because it's not just that we want to know um, one, we want to know five. How much did five pairs? So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five that we actually want to know. All this, uh, we need to know the cost of one, but only so that we can figure out the cost of five. So if we know the total is 162, and we know it's being split first, into 24 pieces. First split it into the total 24 pieces. Okay, you can put the decimal here just to remind yourself that's where it is and we may have to annex at zero. 16 is not divisible by 24, nor is one. So no, not one, not 16, so 162. Again, if I had 25, then I could guess six and I'd be pretty close. Six times four is 24 and then six times two is 12 plus two is 14 subtract. And uh, if you want to use the standard algorithm here, it might be faster for you. Take 1, give 10. 12 minus 4 is 8. 5 minus 4 is 1. And the difference is 18. That's still less than 24. Annex that 0. That means just build it on. Bring it down so that it is now part of my next whole dividend, 180 tenths. 180 tenths can be divided by 24. If I had a 25, 
I could have um, four for a uh, dollar, four quarters for a dollar, and then 25, 50, 75. So that would be seven. So let's use seven. It won't be exact though, that's okay. Seven times four is 28. Carry the two, there it is, 14, 15, 16. And the difference between 180 and 168, you can use the standard algorithm if you want. 10 minus eight is two. And then uh, one comes down, seven minus six is one. And annex another zero and bring that down. If you're talking about money, you always want to have two place value positions after the decimal so you can talk about how many pennies. This is the dimes, but this is the pennies. Where are they? Let's, let's make them. We've done this before. Start to mark those memories. 120 divided by 24 is not exactly the quarters, but it's real close. 5 times 4 is 20. Carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 2 is 12. Try to lock those into memory because they keep coming up in fifth grade math. All right, so we have 675. So what does that mean? That's all of this divided by 24 pieces. So that is the cost of one pair for one pair. But that doesn't answer the question because the question says, how much did five pairs cost? Now we're taking our long division skill that we've been working so hard to get good at and we're combining it with other skills like repeated addition, also known as multiplication. Now I need five of these. Five times five is 25. Five times seven is 35, 36, 37. And then five times six is 30, plus three is 33. If it's hundredths times ones, it's hundredths. Old school way, two places here, two places here. It's money. So five pairs will cost $33.75, yay. All right, let's do the last one. Whew. Big fat book, here we go, getting to the end here. Oh, this one is tough because a lot of students always ask, what do these words mean? We don't understand. It's really hard if you don't know what profit is. Um, it's hard if you don't know how to, uh, make money or if you've never had a sale. So let's talk about the important words here. A craft club makes 95 identical paperweights to sell. They collect $230.85 from selling all the paperweights. Great. If the profit the club collects on each paperweight is two times as much as the cost to make each one, what does it cost the club to make each paperweight. So if you make a little tape diagram just to kind of picture this, okay, the profit is two times as much as the cost. So if the cost is one, okay, and the profit is two, okay, then you can just say, all right, I need these three pieces in order to kind of evaluate my cost. So what do we do here? We're going to take our uh, $230.85, and we're going to first divide it by the 95 identical paperweights. So $230.85 let's see if we can find out the cost of each paperweight but that's just going to be uh, how much money that's not going to be the cost that's going to be how much money they collect this is all the collected money another tape diagram okay 230 and 85 cents that's what they collected from selling one two three dot 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 95 paperweights, 95 paperweights, okay? So we're gonna divide this by that, that's our first step. All right, two is not divisible, 23 is not divisible by 95, but 230 is. So if I have about 100, and I have a little bit more than 200, let's put a two here. Two times five, 10, two times nine, 18, plus one, 19. 
do subtraction. Zero here, and the difference between 19 and 23, or do the standard algorithm, take one and give 10, and give yourself uh, 13 minus nine. And now I have 40 left over, less than 95. Bring down, follow those division steps. Now I have 408, or roughly 400, with roughly 100 as my divisor. So let's guess a four there. Four times five, 20. And then four times nine is 36, 37, 38. Do your subtraction, eight minus zero is eight. The difference between 38 and 40 is two. Compare 28 to 95, and it's less, so bring down. Now I have 285 divided by 95. And if I had 100, and if it, this was 300, I would guess three. And I have a little bit less, so I can try that and do my multiplication, three times five, 15, and then three times nine is 27, plus one is 28, and I have my exact answer. So, and it should work out exactly, you shouldn't have remainders because this is the total that they collected and this is how many paperweights they had. So $2.43, or you could put it here, $2.43 is basically what they collect for each one. But the question, then you have to go back to here. This is really the hard part for a lot of kids, most kids. If the profit the club collects on each paperweight is two times the cost, what does it cost the club to make each paperweight? So now that I have this to define the cost and the profit for one paperweight, how do we find this number? You take the 243 that makes up the total amount collected and you split it into these three pieces. So 243 is now your dividend. Let's split it into three because I need to know the, co the amount of one of those pieces. If they asked you for the profit, you'd have to know two, but they're asking you about the cost. So let's divide. Zero, two is not divisible by three, but 24 is three times eight is 24 with nothing left over. And this one's so easy. It's almost like they want you to get it so badly and then we have zero left over. So this amount is the cost for each paperweight. How about that? Super, super tough. 81 cents is what each paperweight costs. Hooray, super tough there, but you've got it now. All right. Oh, I hope this is helpful. Click subscribe. Come back again. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.